Welcome everyone and thank you for joining us here on the Infinite Prosperity Podcast. My name is Louisa Havers and I help high achievers, entrepreneurs and coaches lift the lid on life and business. And we have something very special for you, our listeners today, with a training that we did recently on the Clubhouse platform. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with Clubhouse, it is a social networking app where people create rooms and discuss a wide range of topics. And because it's delivered direct to your mobile device, you may notice a difference in audio quality, which we're hoping doesn't take away from your listening experience. What is important, of course, is the content that we're sharing. And I invite you to be intentional with what you wish to receive from listening today. How do you want to feel after you have listened to our session? For more information on how you can join us on future Clubhouse meetings with me, Louisa Havers, be sure to check out the show notes below and we will see you in the Clubhouse. Hey everybody and welcome back to the Infinite Prosperity podcast. I am so excited because I have the incredible Julia Fry with me today. Let me give you a little bit of an introduction to Julia. Julia helps parents and professionals increase their self-compassion so they can feel more relaxed with themselves and with everybody else. She is the creator of the Shine Collective. This is where you double or triple your self-compassion muscle strength in 42 days or less befriend your saboteur this is a transformational life coaching program for men and women who want to learn to love and appreciate their saboteurs and transform their energy into inspiration for their future roadmaps oh my goodness I absolutely love this and Julia is trained in coaching person-centered counseling art and is currently training in creative psychotherapy at master's level And she has been researching overcoming trauma and turning self-criticism into self-compassion for over four years now. And Julia has served hundreds of people, empowering them to make life-changing transformations so that they love the life they live. You have had such a diverse journey here. This is so exciting. Julia began her life working, providing administration services and offices, but then transitioned from that world about 15 years ago to live her passion, coaching and mentoring people to live their lives authentically. So of course, as any good journey, this meant stepping up to focus on her own authenticity and her relationship with herself. I cannot wait to dive into this, uh, Julie. It's so <laughs> exciting. And if you know Julie, you know she works very intuitively and combines her knowledge of coaching, psychology and research into an embodiment of self-compassion to support your transformation and reconnection with yourself. So you can accept and heal the parts of you that hold you back. In this way, you can lead a life authentically with that fulfillment and enriching relationships and passion led work. Ah, oh, Julia, <laughs> welcome. I'm so excited to have you as our guest today. Thank you so much. I'm really excited to be here. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> just so lovely and I, I was so excited when you shared um, the topic that you wanted to, to, to share with us today which is what what your saboteurs really want but don't yet know don't yet know and I was like oh this is gonna be so so juicy and a huge welcome to everyone who is also listening live in the clubhouse it's great to have you here today I can see you massive massive welcome So, Julia, let's dive in because there's just, this feels like a really big topic, a really juicy topic and one that everybody Mm -hmm. can resonate with. Let's dive in. Let's start at the, at the beginning. First up, what, what is a saboteur so that we're not making assumptions here from your perspective? saboteur? Yeah, it is really easy to make assumptions and think we're all on the same page about stuff like this, isn't it? Um, So one way of thinking about it is uh, there are two modes of being, say, and I call them sage and saboteur. And you could see them as brain states that affect how you perceive yourself, others and situations. And sage, I just love this word, sage, allows you to share your uniqueness with the world fearlessly and with joy and to appreciate the uniqueness of others. Mm. And saboteurs tend to be rigid and fear-based and keep you small, and they just wanna keep you safe. And saboteur mindset negatively views you and others and situations, and sage mindset appreciates you and others 
and situations. And the societies that we live in, um, we've got these values of judgment and productivity, and that's the norm in these societies, right? Um, so this context increases our tendency to judge and trigger other saboteurs. And a lot of us grew up in families that were less than supportive, or even if they were supportive, the wider context of school, uh, church, if you went to church, work, relationships, popular culture, it still can trigger the creation of saboteurs. And all they really are is a collection of limiting beliefs that are so strong that they're almost like personalities of their own. I and, love that. Uh, <laughs> <exactly>. <laughs> Anyone else going, oh, yes, my saboteurs feel like they've got their own personality. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and the beliefs of these kind of inner personalities are so rigid and they affect your behaviours and your physicality, you know, how you hold yourself and how you see yourself mm. and other people in the world. It's, that is such a good point and I love <clears throat> excuse me the way that you talk about how because of course we've all got these saboteurs if we're all running these we've all got multiple personalities within us in relation <laughs> to the different saboteurs that we're running and then that's affecting how we see each other in the world a massive impact on everything in terms of relationships our yeah. success in life, um, our fulfillment in life, our happiness in life, all, every, everything, absolutely everything. Absolutely everything. I'm really nodding as um, I'm <laughs> listening to you. And of course, you can't see me. <laughs> <laughs> I love and, it. Thank you for the verbal nod. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the other thing, of the, the one of the key things about these saboteurs is they were really useful when we were children, otherwise they wouldn't exist. Mm. And they're coping strategies and they were developed by us to help us survive difficult situations when we weren't fully able to accept ourselves and whatever we were feeling at the time. And everyone seems to have them. I haven't come across anyone who hasn't had them. Mm. And that's regardless of how your parents were with you. And they seem to run on automatic, these um, rigid beliefs or saboteurs. And it seems like they're hardwired, but they're not. And our brains are elastic and can be retrained, which is great mm. news. And my cat is trying to um, <laughs> sabotage right now. <laughs> <laughs> Obi's saying, I want in on this action. <laughs> Yes, he's, he's going, let, let me walk across your computer keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect timing. I love how you, yeah, I'm calling you out, Obi, on your saboteur behaviour right now. <laughs> you, you mentioned a, a moment ago about SAGE. Um, mm. Tell us again, what, what is SAGE? Yeah, so SAGE, oh, SAGE. <laughs> My sage has been with me since I was born, mm. just as yours has been with you. And the way I see it, I wonder if this resonates with you, is um, the mindset and the physicality of sage is what allows us to connect with our higher selves so that we can be connected to everything else mm. and receive the wisdom that allows us to make great decisions um, create amazing things, um, be at peace with ourselves and others in the world. And some people's experience of SAGE can be different at different times and perhaps links them to um, earlier versions of themselves when they were able to be in SAGE mode. And other people have a sense of this kind of constant SAGE presence and although they may have been hijacked by saboteurs it can feel like it's kind of there waiting to come online does that make sense mm. yes it's yeah. lurking lurking in the shadow yeah lurking <laughs> with intent with good intent <laughs> yeah <laughs> I love that so what is it then um that from your perspective that you you found that you know what do saboteurs really want mm. So, so basically, um, 
it's like that phrase as above so below Mm -hmm. they want to thrive and we all want that but they're in survival mode and that means that when we're hijacked by them we're in fight flight or freeze mode Mm -hmm. and yeah and in survival mode it's impossible to think straight or feel intuitive urges and take aligned action and it's all about trying to keep safe and what they actually really want is to use their gifts but they've been they have these disowned parts that they're responsible for keeping Mm. silent and hidden so they're busy making sure that these disowned parts don't come out and express things that weren't allowed to be expressed in childhood say um I'll give you an example of a saboteur that lots of people seem to have at the moment. Um, <laughs> let's call it the, <laughs> I've been really noticing this. Let's call it the restless saboteur. And this is one that keeps you super busy. So mm. yeah, you might be feeling overwhelmed, <laughs> yet still adding more into your calendar. So more social events, more learning events, courses etc more and there's no time to stop and reflect and it's automatic behavior and it keeps going and what it really wants is to rest Mm. and it doesn't know this yet but if it were to rest it could do its planning and organizing in flow and it would feel so much better because it would discern with ease which events to go to and realistically which are not viable and the quality of how it organizes would feel so enjoyable but in its present state it can't rest it's afraid of rest so why is that Mm. Uh, it might tell you it's because if you rest you might not get going again for example and that's a lie (laughs) (laughs) basically (laughs) liar liar yeah pants on fire yeah (laughs) (laughs) literally because it's like running around going oh I must do this this." yeah (laughs) but what's really going on is if it rests then the disowned parts of you that it's hiding and silencing may begin to make their presence felt in that space and that Mm. might show up as discomfort in some way at first which is then a trigger for the saboteur to get going and do more so the saboteur and those disowned parts are locked into this strange dramatic relationship and the pandemic seems to have created conditions for this particular saboteur to be triggered in a lot of people so many people are busy right now too busy to stop and be with themselves and this saboteur is brilliant at helping people cope in a shitty situation (laughs) but it doesn't help them be themselves enjoy themselves feel relaxed with themselves and other people and it's too frantic for that it's always looking for more Mm. Mm. I love how you describe this and that I recognize this as well with my clients (laughs) Mm. I'm like yeah Yeah. I can see this this sense of um, needing to keep busy all the time I call it the the busy mask and a lot of very successful people I think so in um, you know run this saboteur Um, because feeling like the need they've got to keep being busy so that they can keep that level of success (laughs) and then of course that can lead to to burnout so if we let these what I'm hearing from you is the actual the knock-on impact of letting these saboteurs run the show Mm -hmm. um, has a huge impact on people's overall well-being massive really massive yeah yeah, yeah that, that, that busy one is a big one. And it makes sense, doesn't it, that after the pandemic, well, I'm saying after it's still rumbling on, but mm. up in various countries in lockdown still and all the rest of it, people who have gone, I've been in lockdown for so long, quick, get out. Um, and, you know, cramming their diaries full of, you know, so, so many different things when they've been mm. used to potentially going at a slower pace for a period of time that may have been out of their normal character actually (laughs) the sage part of them might have been going oh finally she stopped he (laughs) stopped thank goodness (laughs) 
but these patterns run deep don't they if if they're not addressed they do they run really deep and yeah um what you said there about um people slowing down for a while and then suddenly things opening up in the UK at least anyway Mm. um and then suddenly filling up their social calendars yeah I've had clients um going oh I don't know if I can fit that in because I've got this and this and this and then um I invite them to take a pause and reflect and Mm. see perhaps is there a saboteur running the show there Mm. and it's so even when you have started to recognize them they you know it's not like a one-time thing get rid of them and that's it they they keep coming back in and then we have this other thing to deal with which is what you were saying about that that kind of like low activity and then suddenly thrust back into the world again Mm. it's quite a lot for our systems to cope with it really it really is isn't it how how do you know from your perspective because I know this is your 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 area of expertise you're a leading authority on this how do we help saboteurs to use their gifts Mm. so that's where sage comes in and um, one of the things that I teach is to build up sage modality. So it's a bit like getting physically fit in a gym. Once you're fit, you don't stop going. Well, some people do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but the idea is to keep going to stay yeah. toned, right? Mm. <laughs> so we build up sage by doing daily activities to be in sage mode and by doing these easy activities every day we form a habit a healthy habit and then when the saboteur is triggered we can use our sage to get curious about what's going on for the saboteur and hold space for it and for the disowned parts to express themselves and integrate and when that happens it feels like your inner team is really on your side. I love that. That's so beautiful. It's That's so like nice. full integration, not yeah. disconnected within yourself. So you can be fully empowered to have the fulfillment that you want in life without sabotaging yourself. <laughs> um, yeah. Exactly. Is, yeah. The um, question that has just popped into my mind, because I know that whenever people are drawn to personal development work, coaching, psychotherapy, all the amazing modalities that are out there, helping people to live their best lives, to transform and live at their best, you know, their highest level. Um, Everyone has a journey and a a story of how they got there. How did you get to, how did you come to do this work? Hmm, Yes, I, um, I actually developed a system over years of research and experiment ex- I can't say the word experimentation <laughs> on myself at yeah. first in order to overcome social anxiety depression mm-hmm. and ps ps ptsd <laughs> <laughs> um yeah i um i had a breakdown 11 years ago now and mm-hmm. I isolated myself and there wasn't really the help available Mm. for me that I needed. I felt like I needed long-term psychotherapy and that wasn't available. Mm. So I, and I was receiving financial benefits from the UK government Mm. and that was a whole process to be able to even get those because you had to prove that you were ill enough to receive them. So going to interviews was just horrendous so the, the, um, the burden being on you to prove it at a time where mm. you really don't need that pressure exactly at a time mm. where what you actually need is nurture mm. um, and there, and I didn't have a support network um, so I isolated myself and so this was going on and I realized actually I, I could live this way for the rest of my life um, mm. And, the, and that's when my sage was um, kind of coming in. It was a very tiny, tiny spark or voice at the time. And it was like, um, let's change something. What can we change? Mm-hmm. And so I decided um, 
okay, well, I didn't go to university at the kind of sort of the norm at 18. Um, and I was what well, I was uh, 39. Yeah. And I thought, oh, I'd like to go to university, I'd like to experience it. Mm. Um, but I had social anxiety and depression and PTSD. And I thought, ah, how am I going to be in a room with people? Mm. And let alone study and actually do the work. So uh, I, my sage helped me by uh, setting experiments for me so that I could A, leave the house, B, get to an event, C, actually go into the event, D, speak to someone, ask them how they were, and then E, uh, make an excuse and leave. And I slowly built up my sage by doing things like this. And that's how it was at first. Wow, um, what what a journey and yeah. you know that you've been on and I'm so happy that you've come through that and Julia, you know, it feels like you were coaching yourself through that. Yes. And thank thank goodness because obviously you were, um have pulled yourself through that and coached yourself and strengthened that sage through this the, this journey for yourself but you've done it for yourself but what an inspiration like as you were speaking I was like oh my word you are just such an inspiration to anybody else who's in that space where they're questioning whether anything can ever possibly be different. It Absolutely. Is. It's really, it's really important for people to know that mm -hmm. it is possible and you can start from wherever, wherever you're at. Mm. And I, I, having done all of that and made lots of mistakes along the way, had some painful experiences um I've uh I've got kind of like five pillars mm. that um I've um put into sort of um in it oh how to describe it these are five pillars that I know that work that mm -hmm. can um build up sage and help befriend saboteurs shall, shall I just say a bit about them yes please yes help us understand them this, this this is so exciting this sounds very very powerful um that you've developed this brilliant okay so the first pillar is having um a sage vision or being aware of your sage mm. and um so my sage was a very tiny voice but I was aware of it and so what I teach is um, I invite people to experience visualization of their sage so that they can really feel the physicality of it um, and it's as if they're their most self-compassionate future self um, and there are there are various ways of tuning into sage and um, we could do a super quick one um, near the end of this interview if you'd like to mm. oh I think everyone would love that <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> and then the second pillar is um, stop your saboteurs so that's about identifying how it feels to be hijacked by the saboteurs so that you can stop them and then switch to sage mode using a really easy and quick technique and then the third pillar is building up your sage muscle. And so that's about doing those easy and quick things every day that you can to increase the sage muscle so that you're living in sage mode on a daily or even hourly basis. And that helps you easily and quickly switch from saboteur to sage. And also to tune into your vision and purpose and values and live from them. <clears throat> Excuse me. And the fourth pillar is compassion for your saboteurs. So when you have compassion for your saboteurs, they cannot hijack you. Instead, you can begin to soften the relationship and understand them and their needs. And then they they become on your side. And then the fifth pillar is connect with your allies and that's that's about as well as you know you can have allies in mm. the outside world like your coach or your therapist um, but your internal allies can be the parts of you that are disowned and that your saboteurs silence and when you give them space to express themselves they can then 
um, become your allies because they feel heard and valued and they can integrate and they also bring gifts with them too. Oh, it's really that. lovely. You've got that beautiful framework to take people on that journey because I think it that's the thing I see a lot within what well, that's what people are looking for is how do I get from A to B? I don't want, I haven't got time to go off and do all the research that you've done. And, you know, <laughs> now you know, this is the process that you need to go through. These are the pillars that we're going to get them to the result that they want in the fastest possible way. Yeah, exactly. And we cover all of these pillars in Befriending Your Saboteurs. And that's um, a six month experience where you get to know and love six of your saboteurs. Oh, and in that process, you can embody the system, the pillars, so that you can use it for life whenever you need or want to switch into ease and flow and feeling relaxed with yourself and everyone else. It's lovely. How, how, yeah. how, how, how can people um, get in touch with you then? Let's cover that off so that anyone who's listening can, can reach out to you. Okay, yeah, so people can email me at julia at juliafrycoaching.com. Um, so I'll say that again, julia at juliafrycoaching.com. And so the, e the uh, website is in there as well. So juliafrycoaching.com. Um, so that's a couple of ways. I'm also on Instagram and on Facebook. Oh. Um, hmm. Uh, I just think it's brilliant isn't it I love Instagram because um, yes. all the pictures that you can put up on there it's, it's so yeah. fantastic um, great that there's different ways that people can can connect can connect with you what would you yes. say is the just before we, we we wrap up and you've shared so much wisdom and, and insight um, for everybody to really start to get a feel for this work and to recognize where they may be um, the saboteurs running the show rather than the sage running the show what would you say to someone who's you know feeling overwhelmed at the thought of actually doing this work you know going <laughs> through the process you know if they're going through the process with you or however they're being supported what would you say to someone who's feeling overwhelmed at the thought of doing the work to, to make this yeah. change this life-changing yeah. change yeah that's a really good question I would say start from where you're at mm -hmm. start small and build on that and create a daily practice of say paying exquisite attention to one of your senses without labeling or judging for one minute and you can set a time to do it, say at the same time each day, maybe when you wake up in the morning or before you go to bed or when you're making a cuppa or something like mm. that. And record that you've done it. So I use a piece of paper that I put near my desk so that I can see it. And I put a heart on it every time I've done the thing that I want to make a daily practice. And it really pleases the child part in me. Mm. And it, <laughs> it gives me a sense of achievement. And when I see it, I'm like, oh, I want to do it again. And so when you start small and you do it regularly, and when you look back in a week and then a month, you can really see how far you've come with this um, tiny action can uh, snowball into a really big change. That's such powerful advice because it is it's en enabling you to take those baby steps and then seeing the compound effect of the results of that over time is, is, is huge. Exactly. So, so good. Such good yeah. stuff. Though. And um, so that, that could be the thing that we could try for just one minute now to pay exquisite attention to one of our senses. Oh, I love like. that. Go for it. Let's do it. Okay. So, <laughs> so just for a minute, you could choose something to look at. You could choose something to smell. You could listen to the ambient sounds in your environment. And it's just sensing without labeling, without judging. So just for one minute, let's do that.
I think that's about a minute. Um, I have an analog clock. So it's oh, to... Old school. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that always makes me feel calm doing that. How is it for you? Beautiful. I was looking at one of my spiritual crystals that I have in front of me on my desk. Mm. It's wonderful because I haven't looked at it like you're saying in that exquisite way for a long time I was really it is beautiful <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly so, so it helps you reconnect as well with something that you love it can do can't it so that's why mm. you can do that with a human you can notice all the different shades in their hair or in their eyes say when you're talking to them I love that my sons would they're very good at doing that they notice the gray <laughs> Grey highlights, I like to call them. <laughs> oh, this has just been such a treat, Julia. And thank you for sharing your wisdom and sharing the tips to help people recognise, you know, where this aperture may be showing up, where the sage uh, may be showing up and how to make those initial steps to start living more from that place so that you can do the work. You're not in a place of like, I don't know where to start. <laughs> um, and for, for, you know for sharing how people may get in touch with you and of course as you heard everyone can get in touch with julia across all the different platforms which is fantastic you mentioned to me before we jumped on that you had a fabulous freebie do you want to tell everyone a little bit about that before we wrap up oh yes yeah. so i have got a lovely self-care journal for you um and uh oh can we send links out to people or yeah how, i'll pop how's... all the links underneath the the show okay. notes when it goes out so that that they'll get that they'll have access to that brilliant okay i'll send that link through to you then that's great so is it will it be on your website as well just yes in case? yeah brilliant yeah. okay so what is the, the the name of your website again just so that it's juliafrycoaching.com perfect so they can go to the website to grab the freebie and yes. we will put the links underneath the, the, the show as well. Fabulous. Fabulous. Thank you so much, Louisa. Oh, thank you. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Thank you to everybody for connecting with us. Looking forward to connecting with you again until next time. And thank you so much, Julia, for coming and sharing all your wisdom and your love with everybody today. If you have any ideas for future so shows or topics that you'd love to hear me talk about, then please do send me a message at louisa at louisahavers.com. And until next time, sending you all so much love and appreciation for being here and for all that you are giving to this world. Sending you lots and lots of love. Namaste. Thanks for listening to the Infinite Prosperity Podcast. And if you like what you've heard and want to know more, please go to louisahavers.com. We just appreciate you so much. So thank you for listening and hanging out with us. If there's anything that we can do for you, you can email us at louisa at louisahavers.com. Let my team know if you have any ideas for shows that you'd love to hear or topics you want me to talk about. Really looking forward to hearing from you. All right, that is it for this week, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us for today. Looking forward to connecting with you again. Until next time, namaste.